Line 6 sent me their Pod Express pedals to check out so I could explore all their ins and outs and nitty gritty nooks and crannies so I could show you, the video viewing audience, so that you can make informed purchasing decisions as to whether or not these are the sorts of products that you want in your life. So anyways, I set out to reach those goals. Let's do it! So what we have here is the Pod Express guitar, which just so happens to match the guitar that I have selected for this video. And then strangely, this is really truly just a coincidence because I did pick this based on its color. The Pod Express bass like perfectly matches my shirt. Like I didn't plan that at all. It's just a weird matchy matchy coincidence. But enough about that. Let's get into the finer details of the hardware here and then I'll plug in and start playing around and showing you the sounds and whatnot. What we have here is a pretty basic and easy to understand layout that happens to hide an extreme amount of features. There's a lot going on here and I'm hoping that I can cover as much as possible in this video without it being three hours long because you don't want to watch that and I don't want to film it. But anyways, we've got a five knob set up here two foot switches, mono in, I'm running stereo out. You have a power jack there to run off of nine volt, a headphone jack with a headphone volume controller on the side. There is also a USB plug because you can use these as recording interfaces. Yeah, you can plug them into your computer and do software updates and things like that and manage your presets and whatnot. But you can use it as a full blown recording interface, which funny enough is exactly what I used to do with my old Pod XT. That's right, I used to have a Pod XT and I used it as a recording interface. But anyways, let's get into the nitty gritty of all the knobs and switches and stuff like that. You've got a rotary switch to give you selections in between all your different amp settings. You have got distortion, modulation, delay, and reverb with four of those effects across each knob, giving you a range as you see as you go along the knobs there. On the end of the delay knob, you have a built-in looper which is a fantastic thing to have. You also have a built-in tuner. You hold that down. Built-in tuner, built-in looper, built-in tuner. It's a recording interface. It's an amp and a cab simulator. It's a multi-effect with distortion, modulation, delay, and reverb. And it's got presets. It's got like spots for 21 different presets, I think. It's easy to select them. You just hold down both foot switches and then you can scroll back and forth. <laughs> There's a lot going on here and I'm ready to show it off. So let's throw on the headphones, which I'll be monitoring through and we'll start playing around with the sounds. Let's get off of this preset situation here. I am on the neck pickup right now, and you might notice that it's dead silent. That's because there's actually a built-in noise gate going on right now. You can turn it off. You can bypass that, but you have to get into the deep dive that is the global settings, and I'm just not going to do that right now. But let's explore some of the effects, and then we'll scroll through all the amp settings. <laughs> Of course, I've got to show off that spring reverb first. Might as well go all the way, right? drip to it. It's kind of a clicky drip that trails you're playing a bit like it's approaching a slap backy delay. But for an all-in-one device, an all-in-one multi-effect pedal, it's got so much going on, I'll take it. to the hall.
wait. Max it out. And then space. ambient needs. Delay, analog delay. Control the time with the tap tempo. Digital. Tape delay. And then at the looper. distortion settings here. The first distortion setting is based on a clon, if I remember correctly. Let's dial back that reverb a little bit, huh? An overdrive. Distortion. Might as well use the humbucker for that. Fucker. 
modulation. Here is the chorus. Might as well max it out. Throw in a little bit of plate. You change the speed of the modulation with the tap as well. Let's throw some uh, some fuzz on there. Phaser. It's just a phase, Mom. Pair that with the space reverb. to tremolo. This is a stereo tremolo. So if you are running stereo out, you're going to have a stereo pan going on. Pull the reverb and the distortion all the way out. Oh, getting seasick over here. Let's bring in some reverb to soften that a bit. Slow it down a little bit too. And throw the pong to lay on top of it. Let's pull all of that out. And check out the alt settings now. You hold down alt, and now you can adjust the gain of the amplifier. It's all the way dirty on that Princeton. That's kind of ridiculous, so we'll pull it back a little bit. Adjust the mids. You could boost them, or you could scoop them. But that's ridiculous too. Let's put them about halfway. We've got bass control. Max it out. Pull it all the way out. Go 
about there, and then treble. Oops. All the way up. All the way out. And return that to something resembling normal. Now let's explore the other amp patches. So we've been on clean. Then there is special. Let me pull up my list of things that the amps are. Special is the Line 6 Litigator. So you got the gain range on that. Feels like it needs some low end. Chime is based on a matchless DC30, and the dynamic is based on a Ben Adrian cartographer. Sounds thick. Start with the gain pretty low. Thank you. 
fun to goof off, right? On to Heavy, which is based on a Line 6 Oblivion. Might as well get stupid here. Crank the bass and the treble and scoop them mids and gain all the way up. setting. And on to the lead setting. This is based on a 5150. Yep, PV5150. <laughs> stuff with my Guild Polera.
anymore. Let's uh, let's plug in the bass one. Start playing around with bass stuff. Full disclosure, I'm not a bassist. I'm a guitarist holding a bass, but I would never say to anyone yet that I'm a full-blown bassist. I've been working on it. I've been trying to learn. I've been trying to learn to use my fingers. I was using a pick just there, and I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm just not comfortable enough to use my fingers in video just yet. So let's take a look at what we have here. We've got a compressor section, a synth section, distortion down here, and then modulation and delay. There's more modulation than there is delay. And then at the end of that knob, there is the looper hiding there. You've got built-in tuner, presets. It's all just like this. You can even swap cabs around on both of these. I didn't demonstrate that on this, but maybe I'll do it here. That is the bypass sound. Here it is on, on the round setting which happens to be an Ampeg B15NF Portaflex. Here is the next amp setting. This is Grit which is an Ampeg SVT normal channel. Vintage, which is a Fender Bassman silver panel. Punch, which is a Galeon Kruger GK800RB. Modern, Dark Glass Electronics Microtubes B7K Ultra. <laughs> Studio, Aguilar Tone Hammer. And Deep, which is a Mesa Boogie M9 Carbine. I think Studio is going to be my go-to. I like that punch, though. Studio. Let's explore some of the effects. Optical compressor here. LA compressor. Sounds nice. Deluxe compressor. Punchy. And a limiter. Pull that out. Synth. Might as well do the synth. We have an octave setting. Growl. Try that with the uh, deluxe compressor. Yeah.
pulling out the compressor. Now on to distortion stuff. We've got a booster. Overdrive. Distortion. And then, of course, a fuzz. Now, modulations. Here is the chorus. Flange. Let's try that with some overdrive. What do you guys think? I didn't mention it yet, but it should be fairly apparent just by looking at them. But these are made out of plastic. I probably even titled the video to indicate that. But they're also very affordable. You get a lot here. There's a lot going on with the circuit, with the programmability of it, with presets with the sounds that you can get and stuff like that. You can throw it on your pedal board and have an amp and cab sim that gives you a bunch of options with built-in effects. You can have something on your desk that operates as a recording interface, inter an interface in your computer. So you can record, you can reamp things through it. You can you know, make little notes and sketches and doodles in your DAWs and whatnot. You can throw this in your car or in your backpack. Throw some AA batteries in there, take it on the road with you, have it on the tour bus, play with it at work when no one's watching. This thing fills a lot of roles. 
I think there's a really solid place for this in the market. I think there's a solid argument for buying these things. Plastic or not, honestly, the plastic doesn't bother me. I know there's gonna be people out there who are just losing their minds that there's something made out of plastic. <laughs> but I've actually had a lot of pedals over the years that come in plastic enclosures and I've never had them fail. I've never had them break or crack or anything like that. Maybe I'm not as rough on my stuff as you might be. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, at the price point, I think the, the MAP on these is 179 and they cover so much ground. There's so much going on here. This is the sort of thing where if I worked at a guitar shop and someone came in and they bought a guitar or a bass for their kid, or the, it was a kid buying for themselves and they're like, I got my guitar, I got my bass, but I don't know what to do for an amp now. This is the sort of thing where I'd be like, this is a great place to start. It gives you a lot of sounds, gives you a lot to work with, has a built-in tuner, it has a built-in looper. Nothing advanced me in my guitar journey as fast as getting access to a looper. Once I got a looper, like that was it. I was hitting the ground running. I was, you know, off to the races. I was learning to noodle and deedle, deedle, deedle and tweedly, tweedly D and rip and shred and play along to chords and stuff like that. I was learning how to play rhythm because I was playing to a looper. There's a lot here. It's an all-in-one, one-stop shop for guitar sounds and bass sounds. And I'm wondering what you guys think. What do you think of the price point? What do you think of the construction? What do you think of the features? What do you think of the sounds? I'm curious. I'm curious to know where this lands in the market and if people get it. So let me know down in the comment section what you're thinking. And other than that, huge thanks to Lion6 for sending these out to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude, nasty comment. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. Click all the links down below. Please use my affiliate links. It's part of how I make a living over here. And it really helps me a lot if you would make like my Sweetwater, my Toman, my Amazon affiliate links, like your bookmarks or something like that. Think about it. The holidays are always coming up, no matter what time of year it is. So anyways, thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded.